Hi, everybody. Welcome back. This is part two of our discussion on LinkedIn, uh, where we discuss the overview of the platform. And now we're going to go talk about more of the finer details of using it. So, uh, Professor Keenan's, there's obviously a lot of aspects of LinkedIn, a lot of things that you should be somewhat wary of, should be aware of how they work, how you're using them. Uh, the first point I want to talk about is a uh, cho choice of uh, profile picture. So, <laughs> in my experience, um, it's important to use a professional picture. That is what I've been told time and time again. And I think that there's probably a lot of truth to that because it's a professional platform and you have to present yourself in a professional way. So, what what are your thoughts on that? How do you input that? I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna step over if you don't mind to the uh, platform itself. Sounds great. Okay. In just a minute, I'm going to do that. Be right with you. So, as you know, with Zoom, you gotta have the page clicked on in order to. Share it. So there you go. So specifically, um, you get to as as you set up your profile, you get to add a picture, which is normal. Now, again, I have one on there and I would consider this to be a professional picture with a coat and a shirt and a button down shirt. Uh, I can obviously edit that. Uh, as I go. I don't know if it'll let me if I click here on the edit button, it should let me. Enter all sorts of stuff. Notice that there's an edit button here on the picture. So if I wanted to uh, change my picture, I could add a photo. I could search my uh, computer. You could take a picture right here, you know, right into the camera. Uh, that would not be a professional picture. I need professional photography to make this face look good. Um, so it, again, you guys are used to doing this, uploading pictures from your pictures library or your gallery, uh, as it were. Thomas, is there anything else I can add uh, related to that that would you think would be helpful? Um, uh, one thing I uh, know that's kind of a newer feature to LinkedIn right now is, as I know, there is the option to add on your profile picture. Like It's like a, available to hire. It's kind of a green band that goes around. I don't know if that's an option to you, but I know I've seen quite a few people with that. How do you think um, what kind of impact do you think that has for employers? Do you think that's positive or do you think it kind of makes you get lost in the crowd? Would you recommend using that? Um, yeah, so so this may this may overlap with some other sessions that you're going to do with some other people, but I think it's a really important lesson. And I don't have a particular issue with that kind of thing available for hire. But just to be really clear, no one, no one no one will hire directly off of LinkedIn. No one, no one, no one will directly hire off of a resume. All these things are our first steps. You want to get to the next step. So if if you're if it says available to hire, uh, you might want to frame it in a way that gets you just to the next step because nobody's going to hire blind. Oh, look, a great, handsome guy. I'm going to make a job offer just off of what I see on LinkedIn. Doesn't happen. Same with a resume. It's just all about getting to the next interview pro next interview step in the process. Yeah, I I agree with that. You know, that's why it's here. It's a platform for getting you to that interview, getting you to those connections. And I mean, I suppose in some rare one in a million cases, someone did land the job, but it's the step that you need to get to that point where you need to use it to get your interview and the first part of that yeah. is and Tom, professional. I'm not suggesting Thomas that you won't ultimately get a job offer I mean because this is a great place to start just don't expect it off of LinkedIn oh, <laughs> yeah. it's not going to happen just with a snap it's, it's you're going to have to get a you know someone might call you or could we talk via email and just say hey would can we meet in person or could you come and visit the company? Then you're going to interview with two or three people at the company. Then you're going to interview with HR. Then you're going to interview with the hiring manager. I mean, you know, you've got seven steps to get to the job, but it, start, it can easily start here. 
yeah, I 100% agree. And I think the uh, point that I would draw to get back to the first point we made is a professional photo is one of those first steps. If you look professional, a lot of people will be much more inclined to talk to you and see what you have to say. Mm-hmm. You gotta, like I was told many times, but I remember I was told, dress for the job you want to have, not for the one you do have. And part of that is like, if they see you looking like you want to have that job, if you're dressed in a way that makes your hopefully future employer think this person takes this career very seriously, they are very serious about what they're doing, they will be much more inclined to speak to you and hear what you have to say. Mm-hmm. And it's also it's also fair in today's world, this was not always the case, but it's fair in today's world that if someone invites you on the premises for an interview, say, could you please tell me what your um, apparel expectations are? Could you tell or what the work apparel is like at, at your workplace? Because some people would, you know, if you show up in a coat and tie and everybody's in jeans and, and, a, and a button down untucked shirt, that may feel uncomfortable, but I would err on that side for sure. If I didn't know, I'd rather be overdressed than underdressed where you show up and you're the only person that doesn't have a tie on that. That would not be a good situation, but to ask the question is very fair. What's the appropriate attire at your company? 